Welcome. <laughs> Uncle Sugar's Magic Circus. <laughs> Today, our guest is a former air traffic controller. He is a parachute rigger. He is a master parachutist. <laughs> he, he is a static line halo jump master. Yes? Yes. Brian Gardner, mm -hmm. staff sergeant of the United States Marine Corps. <laughs> Amazing guy. Amazing guy. Yeah. And he's going to talk to us today because we've been getting a lot of questions about we parachute have. insertion techniques. Yeah, we, we got another letter today from uh, Doug Pettit. He goes by Big Vinny. I don't know. What's up, Big Vinny? He wrote us a really small letter. It's odd. But I'm glad because the house is filling up with all these stupid letters we get. Anyway, in conjunction with our reconnaissance series, which is ongoing, and our parachute series we have with Dan Brown, and we're going to do some more. Yeah. He was asking some questions about how do you become a rigger? Who puts these stupid parachutes together? Yeah. So BV, Big Vinny, this is for you. Yeah. And that's today's, today's show. So we got the perfect guy to talk to us about this. And also, this will tie in really well because we've also been talking a lot about parachute insertion techniques Absolutely. As, a, as a methodology for mm -hmm. getting small teams into, you know, uh, denied places where yeah. they can sneak in the middle of the night do things. Okay? Yeah. So we bring to you, we bring Brian. So, Brian, tell us about how you ended up joining the Marine Corps. I uh, wanted to get out of a small town in upstate New York. <laughs> Simple as that. Yeah. Um, so you contacted the recruiter? Yes. Actually, I had a buddy that was supposed to go on a buddy program. And I was like, yeah, I'm joining the Marine Corps. And he goes, yeah, so did I. And I was like, no, like I already talked to the recruiter. And I ended up hooking him up and, or for lack of a better word, stabbing him in the back and getting him to come join the Marine Corps. <laughs> And uh, we both ended up in Okinawa and other different places, yeah. and he actually got medically retired, but we still talk to each other. We're That's still good. best of friends. So now, when, after you got done with boot camp, were you an open contract guy, or did no, you know what you I, were going to do? I knew I was going to be an air traffic controller. I okay. wanted that. Yeah. Um, I specifically said, I'm not signing the papers unless I know it's going to be air traffic control. Um, went to Pensacola, uh, NAS Pensacola. Yeah. Was there for about six, eight months for training. Graduated air traffic control school on September 11th. Did you? Right. <laughs> now, That's interesting. That's an interesting <laughs> date. Uh, and first uh, first went to Cherry Point. And Cherry Point is amazing for an air traffic controller. Um, High traffic, a lot of airplanes. Yes. Yeah, a lot of flights. A lot of platforms, right? Yes. A lot of different platforms. Every, yeah. Pretty Maybe. much every mover you have, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. they have. Um, and I mean, there'd be days that, you know, we did two days, days, two days, nights, two days off, something like along those lines. And it was nice in the sense of to go to the beach on Tuesday or Wednesday and not have the, the crowd. But, uh, the days there'd be times you come up, do your morning brief. And the next thing, you, you know, you do the changeover from the night crew. And next thing you know, it's. 1500 and the next crew's coming to relieve you. you haven't thought about i've got to go to the bathroom i've i'm hungry so it was busy and good in that sense yeah. but it did kind of suck because i think a lot of people it's like a grind isn't yeah. It? yeah 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 a lot of people on tv land don't realize that we have our airfields obviously and airplanes somebody's got to control them just yeah, like absolutely. civilian land mm -hmm. yeah and no one thinks that through yeah and so but you're not always in the inside right because i i know yeah. you said like you gave us this picture where you're out helping the dudes uh, set up the uh, the landing fields. Yes, yeah, so fields. Uh, fields. Uh, I actually <clears throat> was in uh, Japan when the earthquake tsunami hit, and I was one of uh, a few teams that went up to mainland Japan. And what we did was uh, one team went up to uh, Sendai, where basically the epicenter was, set up and basically manned that airport until they could get it up and running. Nice. Hmm. So, so this picture is of you helping them set up that equipment for expedition controlling yep, air, yeah. air, aircraft on, on an expeditionary airfield mm -hmm. yeah so how did you then end up becoming a parachute rigger from being an air traffic controller so there's <laughs> there's a mar admin that says uh air traffic controllers must have a major qualification every three years because i volunteered to go overseas i didn't have that long story short uh, i could re-enlist but it'd be pending that I get that qualification. Is that like FAA certification mm. stuff? Similar well, we, we did have a certification from the FAA, but now it was all Marine Corps. Okay. Like, uh, basically, after nine years, you're MAR admin compliant. Okay. Um, but if I reenlisted, depending that I get that qualification, and if I didn't, 
I'd be subject to needs in the Marine Corps. And I'm like, um, <laughs> can you no. spell machine gunner? <laughs> like, no. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> we need cooks right? in Alaska. <laughs> and so I originally looked at a few other MOSs and, and then it just didn't work out. I didn't like it. And I started, I was like, Oh, one, don't want to do that. Uh, Oh, two, I had already, uh, was one of the ones I had previously looked at. Oh, three couldn't do. Cause I went to MCT. Oh, four. And I started going down the list and it was like airborne air delivery specialist hmm. this is exactly what my job is. So you asked the gunny, what the hell is that? Exactly. And he goes, <laughs> Oh, you get to go to jump school and jump out of airplanes. Done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where do I sign? Right. And, uh, and I had already done a tandem on the civilian side, okay. so I was like, "Yeah, I'll I'll do that." Um, <clears throat> lat move, uh, did a lateral move, um, PCA to a unit and started doing on the job training. Went to Army uh, Airborne School, as Fort we Benning. all do. Yeah. Yep, and uh, drink the Kool Aid there and do the run and shuffle, 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 and all that. And then went to went back to the unit. And almost immediately went to Fort Lee, Virginia, where the Army Quartermaster School is. Okay. And you do different ones, but basically it was about four months of training. You learn the cargo parachutes, you learn maintenance of parachutes, and then you learn, you know, uh, the static line main parachute, the reserve parachute, and then the last couple weeks you learn the Marine Corps version of the free fall parachute because every now, uh, pretty much every service has their own parachute. Okay. Interesting. So we <clears throat> learn ours and then we go to our duty station, which is an interesting dynamic in itself that we, that the military now is so many, the schools are all crossbred. Mm -hmm. The army runs all the jump schools. Mm -hmm. We have our own scuba school, but the Navy has a scuba school, the Intel schools, all those schools are run by different services and, and they all rub elbows together, except when you get gear specific, <laughs> Then it gets goofy. Yeah. So, um, but then went my first duty station as a rigger was uh, <coughs> Okinawa, and uh, that was fun. I mean, but it was it was mainly the airdrop side of my job. So now, when you say airdrop, you're talking about if anybody's ever seen, I'll, I'll actually I'll, I'll find you a video. So drop it in yeah. Like when you put resupply, like pallets full of uh, food and water, like that. Whatever. You're delivering those to people on the ground using an airborne platform and pushing them out the back, and then they parachute down. Yes. We hope. Yeah. Because yeah, sometimes right. the tank doesn't land. Yeah, I've seen videos of <laughs> right. like not working well. <laughs> so, and I'm actually a uh, joint airdrop inspector that inspects those loads as okay. well. That's where, uh, while I was stationed there, I went out to that school and got certified to do that. But while we were there, we went throughout the you know the Pacific I uh, actually got to go to Alaska and work with uh, the army up there and that's where I rigged the largest load that I've ever had which was a 105 howitzer wow and I mean as a marine you're never go you're never gonna see that yeah. I mean we yeah. we kind of stick to the smaller side unless it's absolutely necessary um, right before I left Okinawa I got to go to static line jump master at uh, First of the first for a okay. first uh, battalion, first special operations. No, I understand. It is. Uh, it, I actually, I actually found out I was going on a Thursday and check in was Monday, and <laughs> so I had to learn <laughs> nomenclature and um, pre-jump and all that <clears throat> within a, basically a night six. Literally <laughs> sat there, sat there in my room with a big screen TV, just going through nomenclature like that's that, that's that, that's that, that's that. That's that. Brian is a little self-effacing for this because um, his looks may deny this, but he has like a 56 pound brain. <laughs> so it doesn't surprise me that he can said he looked dumb, right? <laughs> 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 buried under that facade is a huge cerebellum. Yeah, right. Nice. Um, no, but basically uh, you go through and you do, uh, every day you're pretty much doing JMPIs, Jump Master Parachutist Inspections, and... Uh, and then you do calcs, like calculating your offset you might need to do. You do So there's a lot of math in yes. there. It's it's probably one of the harder schools yeah. in the DOD. And that's calculus you're doing? Uh eh, it's it's a little bit of calculus, uh, a little bit of I wanna say more trig. Okay. Um but where where it gets more into calculus, I would say, 
is when you get into like the free fall side of it. Okay. Um, but I mean, you don't just fall out of the plane and hope for the best. That's what huh. most people think. <laughs> hut, 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 when hut, you jump out, parachute, right? That's easy. Yeah. When you uh, <laughs> when you become a, a free fall jump master, is where we say you're earning your your hazardous duty incentive pay more. Okay. You're you're really earning that pay. Um, but so I left there because unlike civilian land, where people like do this for fun. Oh yeah, we, it's just in go. the Marine Corps when we when we're doing this, we're usually doing it with. <laughs> You're like a camper. Oh, by the way, you get there, someone's trying to kill you. <laughs> so, uh, I left there and uh, she took a picture of me uh, at Static Run Camp. I'm leaving out the bird, spotting. Uh, that is something that I It looks like the guy's pushing me out there. He's actually two, three, four, don't forget to trace the door and all that. And, you know, there's all this different stuff. Um, and what ended up happening was, is I send one guy out and then I become the next jumper for the next guy. And, uh, that was, that was nice. I mean, basically jump onto a tropical Island and not have to worry about, I've got to recover my stuff or I got to just got to recover and walk off the zone. Yeah. yeah jump on rucksacks. As soon as you make that jump, you're a jump master. So that's your, oh, I'm done. <laughs> and uh but i left there and uh came came to marsoc and uh that's where i started basically transitioning to the free fall side okay um and i went to free fall uh which is in arizona yeah and which is different from the army and the air force's yeah. free fall yeah um but went there had had fun. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's that that course is without a doubt uh, a hard course. But if you're two minutes late, drop. Yeah, it's, it's not a gentleman's course. No, it's 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 not a gentleman's course. But it's you show up and you do all the right things and you don't you save your own life. Yeah, <laughs> you're good and, and don't yeah. kill anybody else. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah. As Dan told us, you try not to kill anybody else too. That's an important. Part. That's true. So I went to. Free fall school at Fort <clears throat> Bragg, um, mm -hmm. and it was a, a, a while ago. They were still sending us up to um, Wright Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio, where we do the vertical wind tunnel. So you learn how to fly yeah. a vertical wind tunnel a lot of times. I don't know if they still do that or not. But they, they get they some do air time. time in the in yeah. vertical wind tunnel, so you kind of get a feel for what it's going to be like. It's not exactly the same, but it's pretty close. Yeah, we we got to go to uh, Eloy, where at one point was the largest wind tunnel in the world. It's not anymore. Okay, but. You do, before you actually do your first jump, you do some wind tunnel time. And then when you, after you've done a few jumps and you start transitioning to the drogue parachute, which I'll go into shortly, okay. uh, you do your, your handle touches in, in the tunnel because you need to be able to counter right. and all that. So if you're flying <clears throat> and you're free falling and you make a movement like you're going to reach out here, there's a counter action, right? Yep. So your body will react, you'll spin or you'll flip or you'll turn or... So you have to, everything that you do, you have to counter yeah. with another move. It's, it's all about air deflection, I tell you. <laughs> the best piece of advice I can give you is you're riding down the road and you put your hand out the window, mm -hmm. right? And you do this, your hand goes up. Yep. You do this, your hand goes down. That's, that's all it is. But in the sky, you have no reference, really, unless you have someone else near you if you're coming towards them yep. or going away from them or going left or right. Well, or right. Yeah. Um, but so most civilians jump uh, in a in a configuration where when they pull that pilot parachute, the pi uh, parachute comes out overhead. Most tandems on the civilian side, they jump what's called a drogue. It's, it's a smaller parachute, probably about as wide as this table, mm -hmm. give or take. And that sits up, they throw that out for the air there, and it stabilizes that.
know, plus about a, roughly a <laughs> soaking uh, wet. Yeah, soaking wet, <laughs> and uh, and then you have the parachute. So you're looking easily about. 225 230 pounds wow. roughly to have that on that barrel and uh there's actually a really nice uh, few nice videos of that out there and i mean don't get me wrong i would love to do that because that is in the pipeline to for us you do the jump with the barrel and then you can jump with a person on the front of me. Okay, gotcha. And it's really fun, ironic because I can jump, I can jump a you barrel. Can, yeah. for, if you can jump a barrel, you can jump a person. Yeah, you, can, you, can, you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. So. Well, and, why don't you tell people out in TV land what that barrel's for? What's the point? Uh, you can put whatever, if, if it fits, it ships. I like that. Yep. Yeah. Um, you can put uh, extra ammo, extra food, you, you know, or. So it's a hard sided case. Heavy you, weapons, right? Yep. Yeah. So we you can put do stuff all the way in. from. Uh, uh, like a 55 gallon drum mm -hmm. all the way up to you know the concrete sono tubes that are like you know easily three feet in diameter yeah, yeah. i want i want to say yeah. um you do that and they're like six seven feet long wow. pack it in there um i have seen uh there is a video floating out there of a parachute manufacturer that basically took a zodiac did it all in made it into like a barrel like Take, took the engine and the bladder and put it in a sono tube and two guys jumped in with that landed in the water blew it up and went wow i'd like to like, see that trick i know i was like that's awesome yeah. i wish i could have been on the zone and why watch this guy biff it so <laughs> static line jumpers jump usually 800 to 1000 feet ish somewhere in there uh like for combat let's say we're for, really going to do this for combat, combat yeah yeah yes you can you can do that um and then a little higher usually if it's a reconnaissance team 1250 yep. 1500 sometimes as high as 2000 okay um however yeah. comma if you can talk the pilots into it on a good day yeah you can jump from 5000 yeah. which i don't so <laughs> i almost had that chance uh to to do a 5000 foot static line jump it was uh it would have been a 4000 foot because of our elevation you 5000 feet msl gotcha yeah mean sea level and uh but the uh where we were the uh the local nation didn't want us didn't want to let us and i was like man there's nothing around they were just so worried about it yeah. but we didn't get to do it but that would be awesome i mean you're offset for a static line jump at five thousand feet you're so five thousand feet how far would you be able to travel under canopy uh honestly i i would have to do the calcs on that okay. but uh you're the, I know the parachute we have has like a forward drive roughly of about 10 knots. But it's always been 10, hasn't it? Even yeah. the Dash but, 1 Bravos, yeah. Dash Charlies were 1 with 10. Yeah. But at altitude, the winds could be yeah. 35 knots. So it, you, you could be yeah. steering into yeah. the wind and you're doing 25 knots yep. to the rear. <laughs> Got it. So then the next step would be Halo. And Halo allows you to jump out of the airplane, do some free fall, and then open up at an altitude that's cl closer to, say, what? Five thousand. Five or t five yeah. or ten thousand. You know, between five and ten thousand. Well, so we uh, we usually open about five thousand feet. No, but where do you exit from? Uh, any we can exit as high as I want to say thirty five thousand feet. Yeah, but with the oxygen. But with the parachute oxygen. cannot cannot be open uh, that high. Wow. Um, so obviously, the higher you jump, the the calculation is that the further you're going to be able to go. And the sooner you open your canopy, the farther you're going to be able to go under canopy. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So you can start to look at 50 plus miles. Insert. Also. Insert. So you can have an yeah. airplane fly 50 miles away from a coastline, mm -hmm. drop a guy out completely silently, unable to pick him up on radar yeah. or anything like that. And then they can, a team could then infiltrate in using that technique. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 50 plus miles yeah. under, in theory, the, right? The <laughs> furthest canopy. I've honestly heard of someone doing was about, I don't know if it was 42 or 62 clicks. Wow. Which point six of a mile. Yeah. yeah. So I mean it's still not 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 bad. And, yeah, that's quite a way. Um and what's funny is that I, I've actually been the ground crew for a guy who's doing a twenty five thousand foot jump. Yeah. And I was I was on the ground where they were jumping out. So they're like, Hey, they're out. Okay, I know they're out. I take off and drive to the to the drop zone. I get there and they're landing. So, and I'm, and I was driving on a highway that was, you know, would range from 45 to 55 miles an hour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're screaming, they're yeah. screaming. <laughs> um, no, but come back, uh, and it was all fine and dandy. Uh, I, I literally the next month I 
was doing, uh, we call them uh, DFTs or jumping, earning lots of jumps and just getting currency. And I was just mainly trying to jump without a ruck and all that, get more comfortable in the sky. And one of my buddies is like, hey, do you want to take his uh, ruck? It's ni- it's bounced really nicely. Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> I jump out. And in my wisdom back then, I thought I did a, a, a f- backflip. But now, knowing that I'm a free fall jump master and realizing myself in the sky, I did a, a front flip. So I came out, went flat, dumb, and happy, and went to, I was doing what's called a delayed drogue. Instead of throwing that drogue out, as soon as I exit, I was going to fall down further because I'm a feather. And when I throw that out, <laughs> I slow down even further uh-huh. than regular Marines that are weighted normal. <laughs> uh, so I was going to do that. Well, I came out, I checked my altimeter. And as soon when I went to go check altimeter, I, I did a front flip. And I was like, whoa, whoa, check hands, check feet, you know, check altimeter. And I was all good. I was, again, flat, dumb, and happy. I'm like, all right, everything's good. When I went to check altimeter, or I was like, all right, everything's good, and kind of get my bearings, it happened again. Huh. And I was like, oh, my God, what am I going to do, right? And, I, again, R's, check hands, check feet, check altimeter. I'm good. Well, I was like, I, I need, um, I still got altitude, so I'm good, but I need to figure this out. Why am I continuing to flip even though I'm, I'm countering it and I'm good? Well, they always say if you cannot, uh, never, fa- uh, never sacrifice altitude for stability. Okay. All right. So I was like, I've got to. St- uh, when it happened again, I had to stop madness and I set drogue in in the tumble. And when I set drogue, it wrapped around my arm. So now I'm falling mm. this way. Side to base, school base, or yeah. to, to to ground and that way is the sky and i can see the drogue inflated above me and thankfully i grabbed the bridle for the drogue pulled myself up in it and undid my arm and let go and now i'm flat dumb and happy <laughs> say a little <laughs> prayer and, and, wow. and do my system Good. check and, and was all that um well, i've also heard of guys like they go out and they're tumbling and they come down and they're like hey Thanks for coming down and straighten me out. I, I didn't do that. Like so, in my jumping experience, I there is a higher power out there. I don't know what it is, but I don't know understand it. But I've seen some. Crazy. I've also yeah. seen it where a uh, guy actually was at when I was at Airborne. They do a night jump, and you can you can see parachutes. You yeah. you understand, right. and we see an opening, and you're like, what is that? And he he didn't have uh, his parachute didn't fully inflate, so he pulled his reserve. I don't remember exactly what the malfunction was, but so now he's got two out. But his reserve, if you if you have if you don't have enough lift, your reserve will catch air and get you. Yeah. He obviously had some kind of lift because it went out and down. Yeah. So he's 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 pulling it. Yeah. And and he gets it all out and he's got enough silk overhead and slams into the ground and walks off the drop zone wow walks off obviously went to the hospital and get checked out but yeah. like th- that's a sign from god telling you <laughs> you, you know parachuting ain't f- if at first you don't succeed <laughs> skydiving is not for you <laughs> so so true so how different was it for uh halo uh jump master school than for static line jump master school it's it's a lot better because they know they know that you've done static line jump master where you you've got to learn everything but they focus more on the math yeah. in that and make sure you understand because you got to do your distances are greater yeah than the you do potential for winds at different directions at different altitudes and well, how do you calculate those winds at different because we all know at different altitudes you have different winds exactly you know and there's it dog legs yeah. and all this and uh but we have to calc uh the altimeter so we are not the altimeters, uh, but so we jump with a automated activation device yeah. and we have to, if we jump, if we leave the bird or leave the ground here, but we're jumping here. The difference in elevation might be uh, different. So we have, might have to set that for a different altitude at the same time. If we're doing a, Hey, ho, and that's a altitude. device that's inside the parachute that if you were unconscious for some reason, you ran into somebody, it will pull your parachute for you. Yeah. yeah. It it'll, reaches it'll, a certain altitude and yeah. pops, right? Yep. Yeah. And it, it will do that even if you are not in the sky. Right. <laughs> right. If it's set incorrectly, it's right. correct. Um, so 
basically, if you're moving at a certain altitude, you know, it, it measures uh, an astronomical amount of data. It'll cut the reserve a closing loop and deploy your reserve. Okay. Now, just because it does that doesn't mean you might you you're gonna land safe safely because if you're unconscious and you can't control, yeah, you go right into power lines or yeah, yeah exactly. There's so water you're, and drown. Or I'd whatever. say your, your odds go up exponentially of living though yep. if you're awake. Yeah, yeah right. right. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> and a night jump does not mean you're doing this, right? I know plenty of people that have plenty of night jumps. Like that. <laughs> Help me, Jesus! But so you have to calculate that. You might also have to change. So with your altimeter, or as we like to call, call it, the speedometer, um, you might have to set it up okay. or down a little bit, depending on the elevation. Relevant, relevant to your takeoff yeah, altitude. Re relevant to that. Yeah. And if you're taking off from where you're landing, it's zero. Um, you have to calculate that offset for both hey low high altitude low opening and hey ho high altitude high opening yeah we haven't talked about that yeah that's so, the last piece really yeah so <clears throat> with that you can uh you can have your aad activate at a higher altitude so that way if a guy fall misses deploying his parachute he doesn't fall to the basement and yeah. then it deploys right um but so talk about hey ho since you've mentioned it. Hey ho, high altitude, high opening. I've heard it called a hop and pop too, where yeah. you get out at a high altitude and you open your parachute pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. What kind of altitudes are we talking about for a hey ho user? I've seen jump at twenty five thousand feet, open up at twenty four thousand feet. Not anything above ten thousand. You got to be on oxygen, right? Uh, if you go above ten thousand feet, you have thirty minutes to get below. Okay. Right. Okay. And so normally we'll jump about. 13,000 feet, give, okay. give or take, mm -hmm. right? Um, above that is when we need supplemental oxygen. Okay, um, if you're going to be above 10,000 feet for more than 30 minutes, uh, more than 30 minutes, you need supplemental oxygen. I've, <clears throat> I've had it where we were, we were jumping. Uh, I was on, on the bird. I wasn't jumping, but this, uh, the free fallers were going to, this is before I was a free faller. Um, and the bird was flying around for some reason and, couldn't get clearance to drop whatever we were above that altitude for more than 30 minutes so we're on a c-130 that has the bail i don't want to call them bailout bottles because that's what we have but they're like this big and they're passing it around like hey because we were cracked open you know mm -hmm. yeah. and all you do is <clears throat> get a shout out and it, yeah. it's really amazing i don't know if you experienced yeah. that because it's like it's almost like somebody takes a dimmer and dims the lights yeah. down and you do that and it's like boom yeah right yeah. brightness goes right back up so when we went to Wright Patterson, one of the things they did was put us in the in the uh, oxygen deprivation chamber there, right? So you and they hand you a little. Um, it's just a chamber they take. Yeah. They take the air out. So, mm -hmm. so you start to feel the effects of hypoxia. So you know what it's. So you, it's supposed to help you recognize. Haps. Yeah, effects, acclimate right? you to yeah. the problem. Haps chamber. Right. Yeah. Haps. That's it. I couldn't think of it. Um, but what I remember was they gave us a, a child's toy. You may remember this child's toy. It's a red ball. It's got shapes cut out in mm -hmm. it, and you could pull it open, knock the shapes out, put it back together. And you're supposed to put the star in the star. And yeah. Man, I was puzzling through that thing. <laughs> I just remember looking at the piece and like I recognized that that piece goes in there, but that was about all I could come up with. <laughs> I couldn't figure out where it would go. And oh, okay, yeah, this is bad. So yeah, yeah lack, of, lack of oxygen, you make really bad decisions. And they, it happens. I'm gonna you, take my parachute off. Yeah, in, mm -hmm. in the Which, sky, you know. And you don't know it. There's no stress. You're just yeah. like, hmm. well, yeah. It's also a common thing with scuba diving as well. Yeah, right? Right. absolutely. So, but uh, That's no, another show, yeah, right? <laughs> uh, they. They do. Uh, they don't do the actual chamber anymore. They just do. A, they have a contraption that cuts the amount of oxygen you get down. Oh, uh, that's smart. And you're basically reading through something, and then they're like, and you're supposed to tell them, "Hey, yeah, I, I need, I need to, I'm good right now." And you know, I've gotten all the way down to sixty percent. Okay. Uh, which uh, or however they said it, and I had to redo it because they were like, "Uh, yeah, you went too low," and I was like. I was good. I was, I was reading. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, they, they'll jump out. It wasn't a challenge, Brian. <laughs> yeah, because that's what Brian thought. Right. Oh, I bet I can get to 50 then. Watch right. this. <gasps> <laughs> and, Sunk. Right. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, they'll do high altitude, high opening. They'll, uh, they'll jump and maybe uh, skirt in airspace and fly in right. and land the team. But... I mean, that's that's more of the team. I, I, I honestly deal with, you know, taking care of the parachutes, and I I jump for currency, for lack of a better word. Sure. 
But and is that what you did when you went and deployed? Yes. Um, I was I was maintaining the parachutes, yep. but anytime those guys wanted to jump, I was out there sure. doing it. Um, and I did get my jumps while I was out yeah, there. Nice. Yeah. It, was, it was absolutely <clears throat> nice, you know, a different scene, yeah. for lack of a better word. Yeah. Cool. Um, what else? And, but Freefall Jump Master is it's not it's it's a little bit more of a gentleman but not a gentleman's course right and you get done with that and now you you have the license to kill for lack of a better word you can put anybody out of any platform on any system yeah at any altitude at that point well yeah so you are a military (laughs) free fall jump master it's not a marine free fall jump master military so i could get transitioned to the arm the army's parachute you just have to learn their i have to have yeah i've got to learn their equipment I have to be, you know, pointed and writing and all that, yep. you know, paperwork stuff. Sure. And then I could, I could do it. Yeah. And so there is that nice part in that sense. Um, and how many jumps do you have total? You think? About one hundred and sixty. Nice. Yeah. Which ain't that much. No, I know. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's all relative. Yeah, it's all relative. <laughs> yeah, but it's nice to, you know, get paid to jump out of airplanes. It yeah. sure is. Well, Brian, thanks for coming out, buddy. We appreciate it. Thanks for the uh, the info on on how this stuff all works. Very important capability set for mm-hmm. all the reconnaissance units that have the the ability to put people out of airplanes. Absolutely, and uh, a really effective way to get guys snuck in to do specific missions. Some of the special yeah. reconnaissance missions. Yeah, awesome, buddy. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Thanks. Thanks.